Welcome everybody to uh, the first session on the last day of chess. Um, this session is on speedy implementations of post-quantum cryptography. And we're gonna have three presentations in this session. Now, as far as I know, uh, none of the authors of the papers actually could make it to chess. So we are gonna watch a couple of pre-recorded talks. Nevertheless, I already see quite a few of the authors in the Zoom call. So I would still encourage you after the after each of the talks to approach the microphone if you have any questions and ask them there. Okay, so without further ado, let's start with uh, the first paper, uh, which has the title, A Faster Intro-Based Bootstrapping in Less Than Four Milliseconds. And the talk is given by Ying Liu. Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is Ying Liu and today I will be presenting our research on faster NTIO based bootstrapping in less than four milliseconds. This work is a collaboration with our team members and we are especially grateful for the support from State Key Laboratory of Information Security. Let me now walk you through our research in detail. In today's presentation, I will cover our research in three parts. First, I will briefly introduce the background of homomorphic encryption and existing bootstrapping techniques. Next, I will explain our main contributions and the core techniques we developed. Finally, I will present our experimental results and conclude with a summary. Let's begin with a quick overview of homomorphic encryption. There is a straightforward and vivid scenario that can describe homomorphic encryption. There is a user who possesses a series of private data, M1 to Mn. He wants to perform some functions such as F on this data, but his computational ab ability is not enough to deal with this data. So he wants a server helps him deal with the data, but he doesn't want to give away the concrete data. So he encrypts them and get n cipher taxes m1 of, of m1 to mn. Then he sends the n cipher taxes to the server. The, the server, after receiving the data, can perform operations on the encrypted data corresponding to what would be done on the plain taxes, or without decrypting them. The server then sends the results back to the user, who can decrypt them to obtain the desired computation results. Homomorphic encryption is a type of encryption that allows computations to be performed directly on encrypted data. The results of these computations remain encrypted and only when decrypted can the correct result be obtained. This feature makes homomorphic encryption valuable in scenarios where data privacy is crucial, such as cloud computing and data processing. Homomorphic encryption schemes can be classified based on the type and depth of computation they support. These categories include partially homomorphic encryption, somewhat homomorphic encryption, leveled homomorphic encryption, and fully homomorphic encryption. The first one, partially homomorphic encryption, supports only a single type of operation, such as add or multiplication, but not both. For example, the L gamma encryption scheme supports only multiplication. The second one is somewhat homomorphic encryption, which allows a limited number of operations, but there are still restrictions. The BGN encryption scheme is a typical example, supporting a limited number of additions and multiplications. The third one is leveled homomorphic encryption schemes. They support more complex operations, but has restrictions on the depth of the computations. Examples include the BGV and the BFV scheme, which are suitable for exact arithmetic operations. These schemes allow computations across multiple layers of encryption, but require bootstrapping to refresh the safer taxes when the noise reaches a certain threshold. The fourth one is fully homomorphic encryption. 
It is the most advanced form of a homomorphic encryption, supporting arbitrary depth computations, schemes like CKKS, FHEW, and FHE fall into this category, allowing unlimited operations on encrypted data. As we can observe from this slide, when a message is first encrypted, the noise level is relatively low. However, as homomorphic operations are performed, the noise gradually accumulates. Once the noise surpasses a certain threshold, the ciphertext can no longer be correctly decrypted. Therefore, it is essential to employ a technique that can reduce the noise within the ciphertexts allowing homomorphic operations to continue indefinitely. This technique is known as bootstrapping. Currently, bootstrapping is the only method available for achieving fully homomorphic encryption. It effectively refreshes the noise in the ciphertexts, enabling further homomorphic computations. The essence of bootstrapping is to homomorphically compute the decryption function. However, bootstrapping is computationally expensive, and improving its efficiency is a critical research challenge. This slide illustrates the bootstrapping process in FHEW and TFHE schemes. The process involves operations such as blind rotation, sample extraction, key switching, and modular switching. While these steps are essential for bootstrapping, their high computational complexity significantly impacts overall performance. The core part of bootstrapping is a blind rotation performed by CMU gate, which involves an external product between ring LW ciphertexts and ring GSW ciphertexts. During the homomorphic computation of the decryption function, implanting the homomorphic mode Q operation is computationally expensive. Blind rotation maps the decryption function to a power of X, leveraging the negative cyclotomic properties of the ring to achieve the mod Q operation at no additional cost. In this slide, we illustrate the traditional NTRU scheme with the GSN scheme and NTRU-based approach. On the left side, you see the traditional NTRU scheme, where the cipher type CT is computed at G1 at mu divided F, and the GSN scheme where the separate test, the big CT, is given by G divided F at B times M. This is a well-known approach in lattice-based cryptography. On the right side, we present NTRU-based scheme. This scheme uses external products between NTRU ciphertexts and the GSN ciphertexts to control the noise to control the noise, the NTRU cipher test should be decomposed first, and then compute the multiplication with GSN cipher tests. As we can see in the error term, the major one is the inner product between small CT and G, so the decomposition on CT is very important to guarantee the correctness after the external product. Then we can construct the bootstrapping based on NTRU for blind rotation. This slide illustrates the application of NTRU based bootstrapping in homomorphic encryption. Here we start by encrypting the message I'm using the LWE encryption scheme, producing the separate test BA. Next, we use NTRU encryption to encrypt the expression X to the power of B, multiplied with test polynomial and then update the accumulator ACC iteratively using a conditional multiplayer CMU gate. Along with specific bootstrapping case BKI, finally, through sample extraction, key switching, and modular switching, we obtain the final ciphertestis LWE encryption of IM. This process demonstrates how complex homomorphic operations can be performed without decrypting the underlying date. Next, I will introduce our contributions and techniques. 
In this slide, we summarize the main contributions of our work on NTIO-based bootstrapping. Our research primarily introduces two efficient bootstrapping algorithms based on TIO, which are significantly faster than existing methods. The key contributions are as follows. We applied approximate gated decomposition in an NTIO homomorphic encryption scheme for the first time. This method reduces the length of gadget decomposition,s leading to more efficient external product computations. We design a new blind rotation algorithm for NTIU using key annealing, which improves computational efficiency by reducing the number of iterations required. We developed an improved automorphism based on blind rotation variant further enhancing performance. As a result, our method is 1.7 times faster than the current state of the art, the TFHERIS library. Approximate decomposition was initially used in the TFHE scheme to reduce the length of the gadget decomposition, thereby improving the computational efficiency of the external product we know that the previous NTIO schemes employed exact decomposition. Here, we introduce the technique of approximate decomposition, which involves introducing an approximation factor P during the decomposition of NTIO schemes. The NTIO cephatases are then formally decomposed, resulting in a decomposition that includes a factor of p in GSN ciphertesis. This factor must be considered in noise estimation to select parameters. This slide illustrates the key unrolling blind rotation technique. To perform n rotations, the key unrolling technique can reduce the number of rotations from n to n divided k, where k is the unrolling factor. Here we use two as an example. First, x to the power of AISI can be written as this form. Now our goal is to transform it into the computation of this form. We can further write the formula, this one, as the technique below, and then separate the corresponding i to i, s to i, i to one, and the power, and the x to the power of a to i. Finally, the parts related to s to i, s to i, i to one are sealed into a new self-generated key. In this way, we have constructed a new three input stimulus gate as shown in the slide. The part within the blue box represents the encrypted bootstrapping key. This three input stimulus gate can reduce the number of iterations, which means it can decrease the total number of entities in the process. The diagram illustrates our blind rotation computation process. First, the NTIO key undergoes approximate gadget decomposition. Then, these cipher tests are transformed using NTT and pointwise multiplication with the GSN keys, which had been pre processed into NTT form. After summing, the NTT form NTIO cephatesis is converted back to coefficient form. This flowchart represents the entire bootstrapping computation processes. It is important to note that after completing the blind rotation, we can use the sample extraction algorithm proposed by XDD to convert the NGIO safer test into an LWE safer test. Next, we focus on the blind rotation process based on automorphisms. Unlike the n times iterations performed by the same use case, the blind rotation algorithm based on automorphism partitions the multiplicative group of integers modulo 2n from a set perspective. Each AI of the LWE cipher ties belongs to one of the n size. Therefore, we iterate 
overall in size, and if AI is in the site, we perform an automorphism G and an external product operation with the corresponding SI. The LMK scheme process is that when there are two empty sites along the N size and there is no external product involving SI, we can move to consecutive automorphism G into a single automorphism G squared. In this case, we only need to introduce a key switching key for G squared. Our improvement is that we can mod not only consecutive empty size, but also symmetric size. We observe that the size IL positive and IL negative are symmetric. So we can merge IL positive and IL negative into one. In this case, we need to introduce the key negative SI to perform the corresponding external product operation. Thus, we can directly reduce the N size to half of N size and then merge the consecutive symmetric size. The final result is that our method reduces the number of automorphisms by 34% compared to the XZD scheme and by 20% compared to the LMK scheme. Let's take a look at the experimental parameter settings. Our experiments were conducted on an intro called i 5 12500 CPU with 64 GB of RAM running Ubuntu 22.04. The results are based on the average of 5,000 executions. Our experimental results are divided into three parts, of which is the experimental data on OpenFHE. The parameter 128B represents the method based on semi-scales, while the parameter 128G represents the method based on the automorphism. In the semi-space method, our scheme is 2.7 times better than FHEW and 1.4 times faster than FANU. In automorphism-based method, our scheme is 2.4 times faster than the LMK scheme and 1.3 times faster than the XDD scheme. We also provide more advanced implementations, including results using AWS instructions and FPGA hardware. Using AWS file instructions, we can execute a gate bootstrapping in just 3.8 milliseconds which is 1.7 times faster than TFHERIs. Additionally, our NFP algorithm is currently the faster FPGA hardware accelerated TFHE implementation. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone for your attention. If you have any questions or topics of interest you'd like to discuss, please contact us. Okay, do we have any questions from the audience? Maybe I start with one that might also be related a bit to the third talk of the session, which uses AI accelerators for accelerating Kaiba. Um, as far as I know, like these AI accelerators uh, mostly use uh, hardware acceleration for matrix vector multiplication which should also be useful for implementing fully homomorphic encryption. So I'm kind of curious uh, if uh, the authors of the first paper have an opinion on how they roughly compare, especially like the AVX implementation, such as AVX 512, compared to capabilities of, of current um, accelerators for AI. So if you do have an opinion on this, um, is on a, a mute, otherwise we can maybe also defer the question uh, to the third presentation.
Okay, doesn't look like so. Um, in that case, uh, let's continue uh, with the second presentation, uh, which is on a highly efficient lattice-based post-quantum cryptography processor for IoT applications. And the speaker is Seven Ye. Hello, everyone. Uh, today I am going to share my uh, research paper about a highly efficient latest based post quantum cryptography processor uh, for IoT application. I am Zhang Ye from Zhejiang University and City University of Hong Kong. And here yeah. is our the other authors, which are also from these two institutes. And here is my the main contribution of the paper. Here we propose a customized latest based PQC processor for uh, efficiency, hardware resource, and flexibility to balance these things. And the efficiency com computing is achieved by SMD parallel parallelization. And uh, we propose some efficient memory as that real uh, dual ECU pass. And our proposed PQC processor had the flexibility through five gram uh, hardware resource reuse. And here is the outline. Firstly, I will introduce the background, and then I will introduce our proposed design, which is the optimization for PQC algorithm. And finally, I will show the experimental result. So let's go on. And so for the background, we I, I want to introduce two things. The first thing is public key uh, cryptography, which include key mechan encapsulation mechanism. And here is a figure to show this. Firstly, we have a client and a server, and then we need to uh, produce a public key and secret key using a uh, KEM algorithm like this. And then the client will send the public key to server, and the server will increase some uh, using the public key to decrypt something and to increase something into it as a, as this one and then cyber test. And then the client will uh, decastulate the message as as so uh, by this approach the client and server can uh, transmit some secret thing and another application of public key cryptography is digital signature there is also two part partition the first one is the signer and the second one is the verifier and here is the mechanism the first thing we have some encrypted data and it is uh, hashing first and then we have a primary key, which is generated by digital signature algorithm. And then we have a signature algorithm to combine this together. And then the verifier will use uh, several steps to verify that the message is from this signer. And so this is the application of digital signature. And it have many uh, important applications in current uh, network applications. However, the a traditional public key cryptography is break by the new quantum computing. Here we can see the quantum quantum computing uh, uh development. We, we we can see that personally we have public key cryptography. But however, in 1994, this uh, PKC is break by the store algorithm, and currently post quantum cryptography have been developed rapidly, and we have several uh possible uh, solution, including the latest space uh, algorithm based on latest space problem and the code base problem uh, and based on some code code base uh, algorithm proposed such as the classical mechanism. And this paper we're focusing on the latest space uh, algorithm, which is developed uh, and central recently. And let's see some PQC centralization. Uh, we are focusing on MLWE scheme, which include the public key encryption and key public algorithm, the crystal kyber and the digital signature algorithm crystal deletion. And here shows the parameter set for these two algorithms. They both use a polynomial size 256 and have different modular and some other different parameters. I will go through. I uh, I will not go through the too much detail about it. So uh, if you are interested, you can go to this. Go to find these two paper. And here is a comparison of traditional PKC and 
the these two uh, PQC new algorithm. And we can see here the cyber test of PQC algorithm is much larger than traditional PKC. And also the public key size is also much larger. So that's it. There is, there, this introduced some difficulty in implementing this PQC algorithm. And so I would like to show how our designer can check, check, check out this problem. Uh, firstly, because the, the, the key size are much larger and the computing speed also much larger. So we need an efficient hardware to deal with this problem, which may which can uh, perform this PQC algorithm efficiently with less resource consumption. So uh, our proposed design is, is a processor which is based on a previous processor work, which is called CV32, which is introduced by the Open Hardware Group. And we extend the original processor design to support single instruction multi-data processing. And we introduce five uh, SMD register file here. And we have our proposed new uh, arithmetic logic unit, which you can process 256 bit or 320 bits for different uh, SMD operation, which we will introduce later. And we have a load store, uh, different load store part, which it can be dual issue with the ALU. We can see here we, we have an instruction issue, and here is another uh, data path, which is used for load store and also the LSU here. So in this case, our processor can execute arithmetic instruction and load store instruction at the same time uh, with the, without data dependencies. So uh, I would like to introduce more about the ALU. We introduced a new ALU here. We, it is able to processing uh, 320 bits times three with the three input here. And the ALU is considered, considered consisting of 10 core. And we have three types of different three types of code here, which is shown here. Uh, based on the the restore different restores here. Uh, for example, here I have several uh carry state adder and rotator, and here I only have the adder and here adder and multiplier. So, by using different restores, we can implement different arithmetic uh, operation. For example, we when you when we implementing the Kegatra, which is the basic operation of Hashi, we can use all these 10 core. However, for others, normal operation, we only use A core to save the power. And, uh, and we also introduce some data sharpening technology, which include pre-processing to, to permulate the data order, and also the post-processing to permulate the data order. And here shows our DOE still design. Uh, here, LS means the load store instruction and AR means the arithmetic instruction. With our dependency data path, these two instructions can execute together if there is no data dependency. So uh, with our DOEC, we can save the time for memory access. And I would like to introduce our SID instruction. We have two types of, uh, three types of instruction. The first one is 256 bits which we will use a ALU call to implement uh, parallel computing for some basic in, in, uh, operation. And the second one is the CAGTRA instruction, which is designed specially for the hashing operation. And the third one is the load store. We designed a 64 bits and 124 bits load store instruction to uh, manipulate this register file. And I would like to show our SMD uh, operation oper op optimization for specific PQC algorithm, crystal kyber, and crystal deletions. And let's firstly, we can have a look at the hashing operation. The basic operation is called cat chart, which is a 25 rounds, uh, 1,600 uh, 1, input and output with five steps here. And this is the algorithm. And to deal with the, we design some uh, SMD CAGTRA instruction. Because there is uh, some irregular data pattern, we introduce five times 64 parallelism, which uh, we introduce totally a uh, 16 instruction for one round of CAGTRA operation. So uh, we will also shuffle the online data during our implementation. 
So with this uh, optimization, we can complete this extra operation with 24 fire rounds in 400 uh, cycles, about 400 cycles. And the, another thing that is the bottleneck thing is a uh, polyurethane sampling. Uh, we have a rejection sampling, which is sampling data from zero to Q. However, it is not efficient for parallel sampling because their rejection rate will be very high. So we uh, would like to sampling a K based number, which is K times K Q in this range. And we use a module reduction to reduce them to zero to Q this range. And another thing is the center by binomial distribution sampling. We design a special hardware uh, inside the ALU and the corresponding instruction to deal with it. We, we can level edge our existing uh, address to finish this thing. For more detail, you can read our paper. And the most important thing is polynomial multiplication and number theoretical transform because it had uh, it occupied a large amount of percentage in the whole algorithm. And it had a complexity of O log N. And we include two types of butterfly unit, the gentleman standard and the Kulita gear butterfly unit. And the modular operation is shown here. It, you, in each uh, arithmetic operation, there will be a modular operation. So the multiplication will be much more complex because it is a modular multiplication. And the difference of gentleman standard and holy turkey is that they have different execution order of uh, multiplication and addition subtractions, which uh, which mean the gentleman standard will execute uh, addition subtraction and then finally multiplication. Yes. Okay. So in our design, we use the size Montgomery modular reduction. Here is the algorithm, and this algorithm will reduce the data. Uh, the multiplication data to minus Q to Q. So in our design, uh, the benefit of this algorithm is that it can, it does not have additional uh, condition checking. And also the operation can be easier implemented with our proposed instruction. We can see here, we only use two multiplication and one subtraction to complete this uh, modular reduction operations. And I would like to talk about our entity, which deal with the data dependency. And firstly, let's look at a 32 points example of general standard entity. Uh, because we are dealing with SMD, so each time we have A data. And here is the resistor by S0, 1, 2, 3. And each one store A data. To deal with the data dependency issue, we will use our proposed uh, output sharpening data permutation method. In each time, we will permutate, permutate the data after the computation. So with our permutation, we can uh, reorganize the data to the desired order for NTT. And finally, we, we uh, in critical key layer 4, we do not need to do additional data sharpening because the data is already the desired order. And the general standard method is uh, similar. Okay, and the entity in, to efficiently implement it, we use a sample programming. This is an example of gentleman standard entity uh, utilizing our dual use field because the entity has many uh, data uh, memory assets. So we want to hide this operation into the arithmetic operation to save the time. And here is the example of the dual use field. We can uh, implement the load store. Inter interleaving with the arithmetic operation to stay the time. And I will now go, go through much more detail about it. And the polynomial multiplication uh, for Kyber, we, we, we know that Q equal to 3329 in Kyber. And the upper range is very small. So we can use some lazy reduction during the polynomial multiplication. And also we can uh, to, to reduce the number of multiplication. And I would like to show our experimental result because we have currently we have many software optimization for NTT, polynomial multiplication, uh, data sampling, and the uh, hashing. Uh, we will see how our result is. And here we, we show the bottleneck operation acceleration here. 
uh, here is the baseline, which is the base processor, and here's our proposed design, and here is the acceleration rate. You can see that here we achieve uh, more than 10 times acceleration for Ketra NTT, uh, multiplication, data sampling, and, and so on and so on. So we, we can see that we have achieved a very good performance here. And then we will see the synthesized result. We propose uh, our processor is synthesized on 28 nanometer technology, which uh, we, uh, uh, in case of HVT cell or LVT cell with a voltage of 0 0.9 and with clock gating to save the power. And we can see here we list the information of logic gate, uh, memory consumption, and the performance for Kyber and Delisan. And we can see here under we our design can run at the uh, at most at 200 megahertz for HVT cell and 500 megahertz for LVT cell with a uh, relatively small uh, logic gate here 100 about 150 above, and we can see here we have a uh, media SRM consumption, and here is the performance for Kyber, which which is a very uh a media efficiency compared with the relative work and have. But the power consumption is very small when we compare with the normalized power consumption. And we introduced a new term, which is called PPAP, which is the product of performance power and area. And we can see here, we achieve a smallest PPAP compared with the, the state-of-the-art work here. And here, we also compare our work with a low power work under 10 megahertz. We also offer from this work. And for the lesson, it is similar. And in conclusion, we have proposed uh, this customized PQC processor with a four-stage pipeline, and it is based on the CV32 core. And instead of uh, design a customized accelerator, we, in we incorporate the basic operation with five-gram uh, operation into the processor. So we can accelerate the latest space algorithm with SMD instruction. And our performance have we have much uh, good a uh, good performance improvement for L for latest space gain uh, as I showed before and we have achieved a relatively low power and area and the most important thing is that we had the flexibility to support more than one skin because we proposed the five grand acceleration we for other uh, new algorithm we can re-increment that as SMD instruction. So we have this flexibility to support much more uh, uh, much more skin. So in the future, we will try to support more skin, uh, more PQC skin. Uh, in, uh, for example, the latest space skin, like Falcon, uh, NTRU, and so on. And for the future work, we, this is mm -hmm. our, our future work. And more, moreover, we, we need to do some compilation work uh, currently, we are using uh, pro, uh, assemble programming, which is time consuming. We hope we can design a good, uh, improve the existing compiler to support uh, SMD code generation. And moreover, we need to do some security testing on our chip. Uh, we will take part our chip and we need to do some uh, security tests. Uh, we, we, we may test it on FPGA first and then tape it out and then do some. Uh, for example, side channel load protection and secure masking. And here is our uh, our future uh, expectation. And this, that's all. I would like to take some questions. If you are if you have any question, you can email me. And and that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it is my pleasure to share my work on chest. That's all. Thank you. No, as far as I can tell, the authors are not in this course. So if you have any questions, I would recommend that you direct the authors directly. Hello, Eric. Oh, there's one here. Okay. Um, so in that case, uh, I ask the audience, uh, if you have any questions, please approach the microphone. Um, otherwise, I maybe uh, start right away with one question. Um, so I happen to notice uh, that the base core that you are using is very similar to the one that is uh, used in OpenTitan. And OpenTitan also has this um, 
accelerator for big numbers. It's called OTBN. That also allows you to, you know, it's basically like uh, large registers uh, that they use, I think, for now, mostly for uh, elliptic curve crypto. There was kind of wondering if, like, the modifications uh, that you propose here would also be, you know, easy to uh, implement into Open Titan and maybe to do like a performance uh, comparison for the cost of, uh, you know, hardening uh, Open Titan or, you know, making it available or suitable for post quantum cryptography. Um, in case someone is talking, you're muted, I think. Sorry. Yeah, uh, if you are unable to speak, you may also just type the answer in chat and maybe I can read it out later. Um, in the meanwhile, I would probably recommend that we just continue with uh, the third presentation, um, which is uh, Conf Kaiba, unleashing the power of AI accelerators for faster Kaiba with novel iteration-based approaches. And this presentation is uh, given by Tian Shu. Hello, everyone. I'm Tian Zhou from University of Science and Technology of China. It is a great honor for me to present our work here at CHEF. Our research focuses on achieving higher performance for Kyber by leveraging high performance AI accelerators. This work was carried out in collaboration with the University of Chinese Academy of Science and Ant Group. So I start with an introduction. Then I present two innovative NTT implementation schemes we propose the two-phase and three-phase designs. After that, I walk you through the implementation details of these schemes. And finally, I discuss their performance in our tests and outline our future work plans. Take a quick look at the NIST PQC standardization project. As we can see, there are numerous algorithm options available in signature category. However, in the CAM category, Kyber stands out as the primary focus for implementation research due to its selection as the sole algorithm. Currently, many teams have explored Kyber implementation across various platforms. Our research, however, focuses on implementing Kyber using emerging high-performance AI accelerators. As we know it, polynomial multiplication is the core computational burden in lattice-based cryptography, playing a role as critical as modular exponentiation in RSA and point multiplication in ECC to accelerate polynomial multiplication. Three primary methods are commonly used. The number theoretic principle, the Karshuba algorithm, and the Tom Cook algorithm. Typically, NDT is preferred due to its lower computational capacity. Moreover, cryptographic implementations vary significantly across different platforms, each with distinct characteristics as the slide shows. For instance, GPUs with their CUDA cores provide high throughput for computation. This slide briefly introduced AI accelerators, specialized hardware designed to speed up AI and machine learning tasks by optimizing complex computation like matrix operations. Notable examples in this field include Google's GPU, Apple's Neural Engine, and the NVIDIA's Tensor Core, with the A100 achieving a computation performance of 320 flows, and H100 reaching up to 1979 T flows. As hardware in continue to evolve, performance is experiencing repeat and substantial growth. This slide will introduce the motivation behind our work. Currently, mainstream NTT implementations widely adopt butterfly operations as the method for acceleration, which provides theoretically optimal computational capacity. However, 
Given the powerful capability of AI accelerators, we see an opportunity to design specialized implementation schemes prior to their computation models. In scenarios where the algorithm's modular Q and the polynomial degree N are relatively small, this approach could potentially yield even better performance. Before diving into design schemes, it's essential to first understand how TensorCore operate. TensorCore performance matrix MMA operation in a single instruction executed by a warp of 32 threads typically take just one clock circle on average. As illustrated on this slide, the computation process begins uh, by explicitly defining the size of a matrix A and B, the matrix A and B and C, and then load into the warp and the computer results are stored in matrix D. In the Kyber parameter set, the modular Q is 329 and the polynomial degree N is 256. It's important to note that these parameter size are relatively small. Use the CRT and the FFT trick, the quotient polynomial can be break down into 128 linear polynomials. When the computation formula for Kerber's entity separated by parity, we can observe that it can be represented as two vector matrix multiplications. Building on the observation from the previous slide and leveraging the computational model of tensor cores, one at all proposed a scanning based scheme for computing entity on ESORX 2022. The scheme is designed specifically for GPU platforms deviate from widely used butterfly operation. In their method, 16 polynomials are batched processed by integrating them into a single matrix, while the Twitter factors are placed in, into another matrix. The entity is then realized through matrix operations. Their implementation demonstrates performance advantage over traditional butterfly-based entity. However, this entity implementation also comes with several limitations, as the slide shows. Given these constraints, we aim to further refine and improve upon this scheme. Let us return to the entity formula used in Kyber. We can observe the better reverse order of Twitter factor exponents. This observation led us to explore it as a potential breakthrough for optimization. As illustrated on this slide by decomposition i into i0 and i1, the 7-bit reverse order of i can be represented as a linear combination of the 4-bit reverse order of i0 and the 3-bit reverse order of i1. As illustrated on this slide, by decomposition i into i0 and i1, the 7-bit reverse order of i can be represented as a linear combination of 4-bit reverse order of i0 and 3-bit reverse order of i1. With the introduction of this new representation and leveraging the property of primitive rules, the ordinary Twitter factor zeta can be decomposed into three sub Twitter factors, zeta 0, zeta 1, and zeta 2, as the slide shows. Originally, the entity formula involved a single accumulation of the decomposition. This become two accumulations, which introduce the challenge of distributing the three Twitter sub Twitter factor across these two accumulations. Based on different distribution strategy, we designed two schemes, two-phase scheme and three-phase scheme. The former scheme merged two sub Twitter factors such as zeta zero and zeta one and apply them together into one accumulation. In the later scheme, each sub Twitter factor is handled separately in individual operations resulting in three-phase scheme. Let's begin with the two-phase scheme as shown in the formula above, which is divided into two phases. In the first phase, due to the additional available J0, this phase involves 16 vector matrix multiplication utilizing eight pre-computed tables. The second phase involves the multiplication of a matrix with a sparse matrix. Here, the pre-computed table is expanded from 8 by 8 matrix to a 16 by 16 matrix. 
This slide introduces the three phase gain. The first phase involves a matrix multiplication. The second phase performs a matrix hardware product. The third phase completes another matrix multiplication. Each of these phases corresponds to the computation of one of the substitute factor, zeta 0, zeta 1, and zeta 2, respectively. Each phase utilizes only its corresponding pre computed table. After introduction of each scheme, it is essential to compare the computational complexity of all the NTT implementation schemes we have discussed. The table presented here shows the computational capacity of for the butterfly operation, the scan-based scheme, and our proposed iteration-based scheme. The comparison dimension includes the number of element-wise multiplication the number of matrix multiplication, and the size of the pre-computed tables. Please note that the matrix multiplication reference here pertain to 16 by 16 matrix. As shown, the butterfly operation exhibits the best computational capacity overall. However, among the matrix-based implementation, our proposed iteration-based scheme demonstrates a computational capacity that is only one fourth that of scanning based scheme with significantly smaller pre computer tables. Starting from this slide, I will introduce the implementation of our proposed entity schemes. In the two phase scheme, the first phase involves matrix vector multiplications, which cannot fully leverage the high performance of tensor cores. Therefore, in our implementation, we fetch process 8 polynomial at one time for NTT, converting 16 matrix vector multiplication into a single matrix multiplication. It's important to note that both pre-processing and post-processing require reconstruction when applying batch processing. We implement the NTT as a modular component processing eight polynomial in batch with the workflow illustrated in the diagram. The process begins with loading the data from memory into the warp. Construction is then performed in shared memory, followed by the first phase of matrix multiplication. After this, the data is restored to its original position in shared memory, and the second phase of matrix multiplication is executed, completing the entity computation. Now, let's talk about how we implement the three-phase scheme. In CUDA CPP, you can use WMA instruction to leverage tensor core for matrix option. On the right, you can see a typical code example. One thing to know that the MMA options happen within what's called a fragment, which is basically a group of 32 threads. For each matrix multiplication, you need to load that and then store the result, which can lead to actual memory access if you are doing back-to-back matrix multiplications. Since the three-phase scheme requires two matrix multiplications, the instruction flow we use is shown on the right. We can see the actual memory access clearly. Moving on, we explore how data is rearranged when it is loaded from memory into the wall. We found that WMA load and store instruction actually change the data layout, as shown on the slide. It is mean that if we try to keep redundant load and store options, the data might be misaligned, leading to incorrect result in consecutive matrix multiplications. So this situation brings us an important question. Since the load and store options change the data layout, how do we bridge the gap between the data layout before storing and the data layout after loading? We propose three possible solutions as the slide shows and finally choose the final one. After some research, we discovered that by simply adjusting the order of a register within each thread, we can solve this issue. As shown at the top of this slide, we swap register R2 and R3 with R4 and R5 within each of the eight registers in a thread. This rearrangement ensures that the matrix in the warp is correctly product metric right multiplied by permutation matrix P. To ensure the final result is accurate, we can easily left modify the pre-computer table by the inverse of matrix P. The implementation flow of the three-phase entity is shown in the diagram. After loading the data into the warp register, 
we perform a matrix multiplication followed by the matrix Hadamard product, then arrange the register, and finally complete another matrix multiplication before writing the result back to memory. It's important to know that all these calculations are done entirely within register without extra memory. Starting from this slide, we will present our experimental results focusing first on throughput performance. We conducted performance tests on two NVIDIA devices, the HX Orin and Embed AI performance primarily using autonomous driving and the RDX 38 GPU. In our experiments, each thread process one instance of Kyber. Analyzing the performance data, we observed that all through the two-phase skin has slightly lower computational capacity compared to the three-phase skin. Its actually performance is lower due to the overhead from necessary reconstructions. Additionally, the performance between NTT and INTT is nearly identical, which aligns with our expectations. On this slide, we compare our work with previous work. For the NTT of a pre-nominal vector in Kyber, 1024, our implement reduced the average cross by approximately half compared to the previous real work by one at all, efficiently doubling the throughput. In this case, using Karasuba multiplication provides slightly better performance than the schoolbook multiplication. However, it's important to note that the performance gain does not fully match the theoretical predictions. This discrepancy is mainly due to the precision decomposition and reduction constraints between two sequential matrix multiplication, which prevent the implementation from reaching its fully theoretical potential. Regarding to latency for the entity of a polynomial vector, compared to the traditional approach of scenario computing four times, GPU can handle this task in parallel, thanks to the high frequency and the performance of tensor core, the amortized latency is also significantly reduced. Finally, we implement all parts of Kyber across its different parameter size. Our results show that the GPU-based implementation has the advantage of throughput, but the shortcoming of latency. As the workload increases, the latency observably rises, while the throughput peaks at a moderate rate workload level. Looking ahead, we plan to continue our research on high-performance cryptographic implementations. To be specific, we intend to explore more AI accelerator and extend our method to other lattice-based cryptographic algorithms, such as Dalism and FHE. Here is my email, and thank you all for listening.